All right, everyone. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to protect all of the routes that need to be protected. So that's going to involve the categories route, uh, this route, et cetera, et cetera. So the only route that the user should be able to visit is the login page if they're not logged in. OK, well, they can still visit the login page even if they are logged in. But if they're logged out, if they're not authenticated, they cannot visit the menu page and all the other pages. So this is going to be a little bit tricky to set up, but we can make it work. OK, so what we're going to do is essentially the way this is going to work, right? We want to make sure that users who are visiting menu categories, prefix, message, et cetera, et cetera. We want to make sure that people who are visiting these routes, um, we want to make it so that if they are visiting the routes, then they need to be authenticated. How do we know if the user is authenticated? Well, what we do essentially is we can actually do this. We can actually create another context and we can actually set the user object there in that context right and we can check in these components if the user is in the context then that means the user is authenticated and we can assume that because every single time whenever we visit these routes it's actually going to make that api call and it's going to update the context for us now, in terms of ensuring that the user can actually visit the routes when they are logged in, this one's going to be a little bit tricky, so I'll do my best to explain this to you, okay? So you see the, how we have uh, these routes over here, okay? Essentially, what we can do is we can make it so that if the user is, in fact, log in, logged in, then these routes, all these routes are accessible, um, including login page. If the user, however, is not logged in, then the only routes that are accessible is the login page. So let me just hypothetically show you how this is going to work. So let's just say, for example, let's just say uh, true. So if true, then we're going to go ahead and use a React fragment to group together those two routes. Because remember, we need the app bar as well. And if false, what I'll do is I'll set up another routes tag. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this right over here. and you'll see exactly what's going to happen. Okay, so everything, all of our routes still work. We can still visit all of these routes, okay? That's because we have this part rendered right now. So we're using conditional rendering right now. If I set this to false, you're going to see that this is going to disappear. We can, If I try to visit these routes, nothing's going to happen. But if I visit this route, this route still works. Okay, if I try to visit the menu route, you're, you're going to see nothing. If I try to visit the dashboard slash categories route, you're not going to see anything. We'll make it so that it'll actually redirect it's back to, uh, so let's do this. I think path, uh, let's see. We can make it so that it redirects, but I'm not sure why. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit different in, uh, in version 6 of React Router, but it's okay. But we can make it redirect, though, if the route doesn't exist. And the route doesn't exist, right? Because look at it right over here. It's not rendering it's not rendering all of these routes. It's only rendering this route over here. Okay. So essentially this false, this false value over here would essentially be the user object. If the user is, if the user in fact is authenticated, then that user object should be truthy. And that means that all of these routes are, are, uh, are available. If the user object is null or undefined, then it'll only render this route over here. Okay. So hopefully that explains, hopefully I explained how that worked properly. So now how do we actually get the user object now? Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, and one thing that I want to mention is I actually don't even think we even need to worry about having a context. I know we did, I know I did mention something about a user context, but I honestly don't think we need it, if I'm being honest with you. We could have it, but I don't really think it's necessary, but we'll, we'll create one if we really need it. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, I think we will end up creating one, but uh, I just don't think it's super necessary right now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a custom hook. Um, I'm going to go ahead right over here, hooks, and we'll create a hook called use fetch user. And this is literally just going to fetch a user. That's literally all it's going to do. I'm going to go ahead and install a package called Axios because I don't want to, I don't really like using the default fetch. So we'll install Axios right now. And while that's installing, we'll create the custom hook. So this hook is basically just going to be responsible for um, using Axios 
to make an HTTP uh, request to our server to get the status of the user or the authentication status of the user. Let me also install types as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's just wait for this to install. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to first create a state variable called user and set user. And we're going to call use state because we have a state variable. So we need to use the use state hook. Okay. We're going to type annotate this in just a second. What we're going to do then is we're going to use the use effect hook because this is the hook that we want to use to perform side effects. And we're going to pass in an empty dependency array because we only want the hook. We only want the, uh, the effect hook or the effect function to execute once. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and call axios, whoops, axios.get. And we're actually, wait, why am I doing this? I actually know, wait, I'm going to go ahead and create another file. Sorry about that. Um, one sec. Yeah. Let me do this api.ts. Yeah, so this is typically, I, I just forgot, this is typically where I put all of my API calls inside a file called api.ts. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call uh, get user get auth status. Okay, that's this is usually what I do, and I prefer doing it this way. So we can do access.get. And then for now, I'm just going to hard code the URL. Okay. And we do need to pass in options. So we need to pass in with credentials uh, and set that to true. I'm actually just going to create a variable called config. Uh, let's see. The type should be access request config. We'll set with credentials to true like that. And then we'll reuse that config variable like this because that's the second parameter for the get request. Okay. So get auth status, remember when we call this URL, it's going to give us the user status. So if the user is logged out, it's going to give us a 403. If they're logged in, it's going to give us the user, it's going to give us the user details. Okay. So inside the use effect, we'll go ahead and call get auth status like that. And we're not going to use uh, async await. So we'll just use dot then dot catch. So this is going to give us the data and I'll just console log the data so you can see it. And I'll also log the error if K, in case there is an error. And usually there isn't. Usually the if the user is logged out, that will pretty much reject. The, the promise will reject, so it will be caught down over here. So it's important to handle your promises uh, all the time um, if it rejects an, if, if, it, if it throws an error. Okay? So now that we've gotten this part done, uh, wh what we'll do is we'll actually just call this hook before we do anything else. So what I'll do is uh, let's let's just do this. Const equals use fetch user. It's gonna return some stuff later, but for now, actually, I don't even think it, this is gonna allow me to do that. I'll just call it like this. All right. Hopefully, we can call it. So if I go over to any page or any route, if I look inside the network tab or not network, let me go to console. You can see we have an object. And that object is the response, uh, the, the Axios response. And you can see right over here, the data property, it, ha it gives us the user that, it, that is logged in, or which is pretty much us. Okay. If I were to clear that cookie, refresh, you're going to see that it throws an error because we are logged out. See how that works? So uh, let me destructure this because it should be... Uh, it should be a uh, uh, curly brace data because the uh, that object was actually the response of Axios. Okay, so you can see that it's working. So before we continue, let me go ahead and create a new file called types.ts because I do want to type annotate the user. Okay, so for the user, it's going to just simply be the ID as well as the Discord ID for now. Okay, we'll get other stuff later. Don't worry. Well, let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to call use state or and then we're going to type annotate that because it's generic with the user uh, with the user uh, type. So this could so this user variable could either be user or undefined. So we'll have to always perform a, uh, a null check to see if this is actually defined or undefined. 
if it's uh, this will only be defined if the user is logged in because if the user logged in the promise that this get auth status will always resolve assuming there's no errors with the server and it will set the user variable and that'll populate the user variable with the correct user okay the next thing that we're going to do is inside the api.ts file uh get is also a uh, a generic so we can also specify what is being returned from the server and since it's just the user object we'll we'll just pass in the user over here so that way the reason why i'm doing that is because now uh this will it will give us type inference over here for this data property and it'll say hey look this data property is user if i did not do that if i got rid of this you're going to see that data is literally any and i don't like that i prefer utilizing typescript as much as i can so what we can do is we can just call set user and we can pass in data just like that and that will populate that that'll that'll assign this data to this user variable the state variable and then we can return this okay there's also other stuff that we'll return to so if there's an error we will also set the error as well i'll console log it and i'll also set the error and i will also return it and one last variable that i will uh create what well, state variable is the loading this is very useful um it's very useful to keep track of the API call, okay? So what we're going to do is um, when we call get auth status, uh, well, we're going to set loading to true before we call get auth status. When get auth status is done, we're going to use the finally method. So basically, finally, we execute uh, after uh, the, uh, the, the method call is done. So it will always execute even if the promise rejects or if it is successful okay so this is a good way to execute something all the time we'll set loading to false okay so i think this should be pretty much all we need to worry about and it will return loading so now use fetch user returns an object that consists of three values user uh, loading and error okay so what we do here is this um if user if user is if user will go ahead and load up all of this okay if user is not if the user is not logged in if it's undefined load up this so let's test this out so right now if i try to go to menu nothing nothing is shown let's log in and let's try that again so you can see now menu actually works the guest route works the menu route does work. All of these other routes work. And the reason why is because we are logged in. Okay. We logged in. The user was fetched. The user is truthy. So all of these routes get rendered. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, yeah, it seems to work just fine. Okay. Now, how do we ensure that if the user is, you know, logged out? Right? How do we how do we ensure that we keep up to date with the user that's locked up? Well, let's say for example, if for, if at some point the the session expires, right? We go to the server, the session expires. If I clear, I can still visit these routes. I can still visit these routes because in the state the user is still populated. Okay, but if I were to refresh, you're gonna see that this is all gonna disappear because when we refresh, it's gonna make another HTTP call, and it's going to uh it's going to not render those routes for us okay so hopefully that makes a lot of sense now in terms of uh in terms of loading an error we probably honestly i don't really think we need to worry so much about that at, at inside this app component i think these you would have to worry about when you're when you're loading between different routes let's say for example if you're going from category to guild prefix uh then you would also have to worry about that but i don't think you have to worry about that uh right over here okay what we could do though for the loading stuff so we can actually create a loader uh like a spinner so whenever the loading isn't whenever loading is true we can actually just uh we can actually just show like a, an overlay with a spinner and if there's an error we can handle that by simply just uh returning to like the main to like a main page for example 
Um, so like, like the login page, for example, we can redirect the user back to, uh, to that page if there, if there is an error, for example. Um, but yeah, we'll, like I said, we'll worry about all of those functionalities later. I just wanted to show you how to protect these routes. So hopefully you all like this video. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or join the discord server and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Peace out.